go and sacrifice your son. It's a big test. Ishmael. Yeah, Ishmael. So, from not Isaac? Well, you know, for us Muslims, it's not a big deal because if it's Isaac, we love Isaac. Ismail, we love Ismail. Mm -hmm. no, right? <laughs> but the one that's to be sacrificed was Ishmael. According to the Muslim sources, even though it doesn't say that in the Quran, but according to Muslim sources, it's Ishmael. But personally, me, both are fine. Right? I mean, they're both prophets, you know. If God said it, Prophet Abraham, he tried to fulfill it, and God replaced it with the ram, and he passed the test. So that's irrelevant, you know, Ismail, Isaac. You know, people make a big fight about it, but not. Is there anything in your faith that's analogous to uh, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, some other. Uh, possible uh, sources of God's word. In, you know, in our faith, there are, there are indications that there was maybe a gospel according to Judas. Okay. You know, uh, so does the Quran leave open the possibility that there'll be other sources mm -hmm. uh, you know, that will help a Muslim lead us? Fine. That? So this is the primary source, which is the Quran itself that was given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. In his lifetime, he, with his companions, wrote down the whole Quran in front of him. So he gave a stamp of approval, seal of approval, that this is the Quran, complete and perfect. And this is the same Quran that was passed down to us in our time. So if a Muslim for guidance, we have to go to the primary source, which is the Quran. Now we have a secondary source, which is the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which we call as a Sunnah or sometimes hadith. Okay, hadith means sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So there is the secondary source. So these two are the two sources that Muslims turn to for their guidance. Uh, guidance about how to worship, guidance about the do's and don'ts in life, guidance about the roles and responsibilities that we are supposed to fulfill. So those are the two primary sources. Anything else beyond that could be like, a, suppose if a Imam says some uh, opinion, like a fatwa, right? It will be just an opinion of that person unless and until they give evidence from the Quran and from the sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So suppose if somebody brings like from a cave, like a new Quran, we don't believe in that. Like a gospel of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Or a gospel of one of the companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because with the Quran, kind of it closed the guidance. It is the last perfect, complete revelation uh, and the last testament for that matter. Okay? What about the devil? What about what? Uh, you know, I, the belief in the angels mm -hmm. is there. How about the devil? Though? Oh, the devil. Okay, fine. So the story of the devil is, uh, you know, there is a creation, just like angels are creation, human beings are creation, there is a creation of God which are called as the jinns. Okay? They're called as a jinn, J-I-N-N. -N. Not the, I love genie show, by the way. <laughs> not, not those kind of a jinn. Okay? So jinns are a creation. They are given a faculty to think between right and wrong and to choose the right and avoid the wrong. So Satan was one of the jinns, and he was, before he became Satan, he was a very pious jinn. So he was in the company of, um, company of angels. So when God created the very first human being, Adam, God told all the angels and this one jinn to bow down to Adam, to show as a sign of respect. Because human beings must superior than angels or jinns. So this one person, this one jinn, who later became Satan by his arrogance, by his proudful nature, he refused to bow down. So God rejected him, he became an unbeliever, and he became a Satan. So, uh, you know, so he is going to pull people away from the guidance of God, and then you have the humongous guidance of God. So God says in the Quran, anyone who follows the guidance, belief and good deeds, God guarantees paradise for those people. Chapter 2, verse number, um, verse number 25 of the Quran. All right, so these are the fundamental beliefs. Yes, sir. Is that what you're saying about the jinn and Satan and that? Is that in the Quran? Yes, it's in the Quran, yes. Go ahead, sir. Um, the question on the day of judgment, heaven and hell. Uh, do all Muslims go to heaven? Or do some, can a Muslim go to hell? Or is hell reserved for non-Muslims? 
Okay, so the question is, uh, do all Muslims go to heaven or do some Muslims go to hell? Uh, God says, God has set up such certain criteria, okay, for person or people to go to paradise. And that important criteria is submission to the creator alone and doing good deeds. So as long as a person strives to be the best he or she could be, and even if he falls short, repenting to God and trying to, you know, avoid that sin, then God has guaranteed, chapter 2, verse number 25 of the Quran, that those people would be guaranteed paradise by the mercy of God. Not by good action, not by, you know, what we do, by the mercy of God. There could be some Muslims who may believe in one God, right? But they may be drinking, cheating, murder, all the bad things that they're not supposed to do. So for them, there would be certain time that they have to, uh, if they don't repent, and if they're not forgiven in this life, there would be certain time they have to spend in hellfire. And after, you know, whatever punishment that God deems is necessary for them, they would be taken out, and then they would be placed into paradise. Mm -hmm. like, like a purgatory, then. Well, per yeah, similar, but exactly not the same. Because purgatory is not hellfire, correct? It's just a separation. It depends what you grew up on. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe that's a range of beliefs, I guess. It's a purgation. Okay. And, and fire is the image of the purgation, but it's a spiritual purgation. I see. Yeah. Maybe it's a little bit, uh, you know, analogous to it, yes. Yeah. Hell isn't, it, it, I mean, at the beginning, before you said that heaven and hell were for all eternity, if mm -hmm. you went to one place yet, but that doesn't apply all the time. Well, I mean, hell is always going to exist according to the Qur'an. Mm -hmm. God is not going to say, okay, fine, you know, 50,000 years of hell, expiration date, fine. Only heaven is going to be from this point on. Both would be existing, but like I said, you know, there would be certain people who would be only placed, only limited time in uh, hellfire, then after they are purified of their sins, placed into paradise. Mm -hmm. But it's only a one-way traffic, by the way. No one from paradise would be placed into hell. <laughs> that, that would be terrible. <laughs> The reason I, yeah. I asked that was because one of the attributes of Allah is, is the forgiver. And uh, I think I read that one of, I mean, maybe I'm incorrect, but one of the things he forgives is the unforgivable. Right. Okay, so the question is one of the attributes of the Creator, Allah, is that He is all forgiving, right? Fine, that is true. According to the Quran, He is all forgiving. However, there is uh, one footnote to it. In chapter 5, verse number 116 of the Quran, God says, or Allah says, He is willing to forgive all the sins of people, persons, right? But there is only one sin, an unpardonable sin, that He's not going to forgive if the person keeps on doing that and dies doing that sin. And that sin is associating partners with God. Or in Arabic, it is called as shirk. So anyone who associate partners saying that, okay, fine, there is a God, but we are also going to believe in this person along with God or instead of God. Including Muhammad himself. <coughs> yes. Muhammad, who is a rank of God, is punishable by hellfire because he is not God. He is just the Rasul, the messenger. That's what he Exactly. So there is a separation between the creator and the creation. We should not mix the attributes of creator to give it to the creation or vice versa. Anyone who does that, they are doing that unpardonable sin, according to Islam. According to the Quran, if a person later on turns around and asks forgiveness, that sin would also be forgiven by the forgiving God. Okay, yes. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Uh, in about two minutes, we'll do our fourth prayer of the day. We'll take that question, then we'll do the prayer. Yes, go ahead. Inshallah. Okay, so the question is, is there any belief in reincarnation in Islam? No, we don't. No, we don't. This one life, then the hereafter. We don't come back to life as, you know, like some Hindus or Buddhists will say. We don't have that belief. Yeah. Is there, you know, we have the Our Father, you know, that doesn't say anything about Jesus, and the Jewish people have a prayer similar to that. Is there anything in Islam that would be somewhat similar to our father, or familiar with our father? You mean the father up there, or father okay, within the church? Our father who art in heaven, okay, now okay. be thy name. And then, you know, we ask for forgiveness. Okay. And, uh, Fine. So the question is, do we have anything uh, 
similar in Islam to the father figure, I yeah. would say, or yeah. one of the persons in Trinity. Right? So first of all, we don't believe in Trinity, so we don't have no, like we're different. Trinity. We're just talking about God. Oh, God. Okay, fine. Just a father. Let's the say first, God. I think the first chapter of the mm -hmm. Quran that is recited often during prayer is like the father of the Islamism. Yeah, that prayer could be similar, but we don't refer to as either father or mother in that yeah, aspect. No. Yeah. So the Lord's prayer, which is mentioned in Matthew chapter six, verse number nine. It's similar, I would say, to the very first chapter of the Quran. Okay. And we are going to recite very soon the very first chapter of the Quran, inshallah. All right, so we'll take a break, and the Muslims are going to pray. You're welcome to join us, or you could just watch us, inshallah, okay? And then we'll continue, inshallah. Thank you very much.